Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Scratch, and I love horror. All kinds of horror. From dark comedies, to B-horror movies from the 80s, to slasher movies, to ghost stories. I'm fascinated by pretty much all of it, and our fascination with fear. But I think the stories that induce most fear out of someone aren't necessarily the slasher movies or the games full of jump scares. Rather, it's the stories that dwell more on the psychological side, that look at who we are as people, and there show us our ugly sides that tend to bring out the strongest reactions. And I feel like those kind of stories are also the easiest to pull off when it comes to manga. There's automatically a disadvantage to manga when it comes to horror when compared to other medium. Movies and series have the advantages of sound and timing, and live action in particular are more realistic and immersive, so it's easier to make something look or sound scarier. Video games have it even easier, as they put the players responsible of their own actions, so when it comes to intensity and immersion, it's hard for anything else to even compare. Even books have an advantage that may not seem obvious at first, but they make the reader have to imagine the things that they are reading. It's why Lovecraftian horror works better in written format than any other. Your mind is left to fill the details, and more often than not, your mind can be scarier than any CGI monster. And you know, this doesn't say that there aren't horror manga that can be legitimately scary, and in fact, I can think of one in particular. One that made me feel uncomfortable and nervous like none other had done before. The one that I consider to be the manga that scared me the most, and one that stays with me way after I finished reading. And while the entire manga is scary and intense in its own right, the truth is that its very first arc is the scariest. Dragon Hair is a manga written by Minetaro Matsuzuki in the 90s, and it really isn't an unknown gem. It got several awards, it has a movie adaptation, it has been translated to English twice, physically by Tokyo Pop and digitally by Kodansha. Yet, I still think it's a manga that needs to be talked more often. It tells the story of a bunch of kids going on a school trip when something makes us the way they're writing collapse. And did I say a bunch of kids? Sorry, I meant one kid, because when Terra wakes up, is the only one alive from the accident. Well, at least that's how it seems at first, but turns out he's not really alone. In the entire train, he finds that there have been two other kids who miraculously survived. And also... No, never mind, it's nothing. Probably. It's... It, it's probably nothing. Just the darkness. Everything is very dark. It's easy to see things there, right? It isn't real. It can't be real. It can't. Not if they need to survive. It can't. Dragonhead does one thing really well from the get-go. Our characters are stuck in a tunnel. The passageways are completely caved in. Nothing is going out, and nothing is getting in. And you know what else isn't getting in? You and whoop light. They're engulfed in darkness, struggling to even create enough light to see what's right in front of them. 90% of the first arc is... dark. It's claustrophobic. If horror is what you can't see, then Dragonhead is full of horror. And of course, that starts to affect the characters. These three kids are stuck in a situation that seems impossible for them to survive. They are unlikely to find a way out. There's only two ways in this tunnel, and both of them are shut. And while it's not impossible for a search team, it doesn't seem that whatever caused the accident is just located there, as a the very little that they can pick up from the radio seems to alert them that the entire city is in an emergency state. Without even any sense of what caused it and its scale, it's impossible to say if someone is even going to notice that the train is missing until it's too late. There's not going to be enough food or even air to survive for the long run. But that's not necessarily the biggest problem, as one of the kids that survived is... highly unstable. Nobu doesn't sound like the most mentally stable person in the group even before he finds out that tunnels are caved in, so once he learns that, it just flips, getting more and more dangerous and threatening as time goes by. The two other kids, now having to be wary of him while trying to find the remains of food that could still be in the train while stepping at the remains of their dead classmates, really makes all of this incredibly stressful, especially since this guy can just remain hidden in the darkness and pop whenever he pleases. They can never really feel truly safe, no good enough time to rest or even sleep. As they might just take that chance to, who knows what he really wants. But he also might not be the only thing hidden in the darkness. Throughout the manga there are some moments where the characters hear things, see things, deep, deep within the darkness. Steps, laugh, a figure, a movement. They shouldn't, because they are the only survivors. But maybe not. Maybe there's someone else. Maybe there's a survivor who just doesn't want to be found. Why? I don't know. But it's probably not a good reason. Or maybe, maybe it's not a survivor. Maybe some animal found its way in. Could be a dog. Could be a lion. Or it could be something else. Something indescribable. What it is, if it is, I'm going to leave that for you to find out. I think not knowing what is there, if it's threatening, if it's not, if it's anything at all, is one of the biggest reasons why I enjoyed this arc of the manga as much as I did. It hams the tension so much. 
And the end of the arc is a magnificent climax between all of these elements put together with a bunch of heavy earthquakes when they are inside of a tunnel with the danger of just being crushed. It's only two volumes out of the ten that comprises Dragonhead, well, two and a half. And I have to say that they are the best two volumes out of the ten. But that isn't to say that the rest of the manga isn't intense and dreadful in its own right, because it most definitely is. Plus, it has a reference to a current 93 album, which is just... I'm just happy that the are no Screw 93. And I'm going to leave it at that. Please, if this interests you, check the manga out. And if you want more horror recommendations, last week I and my guest, The Masked Man, dropped five of them. So click on the video on the left if you want to see that one. And if you watch it still here, thank you very much, and I'll see you next video.